For many of the operations that we're interested in, our programming language has symbols that are designated that we can use to perform these operations. This includes things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponent. However, there are a lot of other things mathematically we might be interested in doing too. For instance, what about taking a square root? We're using the absolute value function or a logarithm. We don't have symbols to perform these things. However, our MATLAB programming language has functions that we can use to perform these things. Let me show you how you can make several of these calculations. Now that we're familiar with executing commands, let's look at some other interesting things that we can do mathematically. Besides just the symbols that are designated as part of our programming language to be operators, there might be plenty of other things that we want to calculate. As an example, what if we wanted to calculate the square root of a number? Even though we don't have a symbol as part of our programming language for the square root, MATLAB has something called a built-in function that will calculate the square root of a number. If we like to perform this calculation, we're going to use this function, or the proper way to describe it is to call this function in a command. So let's type in a command here of sqrt. This is going to use the square root function as part of our programming language. We need to put the number that we want to calculate inside of parentheses. This will be the input of our function. So let's go ahead and put in here a 9 and close off the parentheses. This means we're going to calculate the square root of the number that we put in here. So we end up with an answer of 3. Let's demonstrate this then with other inputs other than 9. If you ever want to reuse a command that you've already typed in the command window, you can press the up and down arrows to select previous commands on your keyboard. So I'm going to use this previous one I've already typed and switch the number 9 over to the number 64. We can see then that this function can be used for lots of different input numbers. It doesn't even have to be an integer. As an example, let's switch this to some decimal. And see that it's going to calculate the square root regardless of it's a fraction or whether it's a whole number. Let's look at some other functions that might be useful. So for instance, the absolute value function is built into our programming language as a function ABS. If you're not familiar with this function, the way that it works is it will return a positive number, no matter whether you input a positive number into it or a negative number. It will always return the positive version of the number that you put in. This function will actually be useful, useful for us later on when we get to talking about distortion kinds of effects. Let's look at some other functions that are useful. So if we wanted to calculate Euler's number e raised to some power, we would type in exp and then put a number in here that represents the power that we're going to raise e to. So this raised to the power of 1 will just return Euler's number. If we like to use the inverse or the complement of e raised to the power of something, we do the natural log. Now, I know that for people that have experience with uh, graphing calculators, you've probably used ln to represent the natural log. In this programming language, it's slightly different. The natural log is calculated just by log. So, just to show and demonstrate the inverse here, if I put in log exp of 1, what you need to be careful of in this case is to make sure you've got parentheses for both the log function and the exp function. So I'll close both of them off, plus return, and it will return whatever number I have put in here. So we can see that that's working. Let me clear off my command window again and then do some more functions. So besides just taking the natural log, what if we wanted to take the logarithm base 10? We have a function built into our programming language for that. It's log10. This is log base 10. And I'll do some examples here. How about log base 10 of 100? This is 10 raised to the power of 2 will give us 100. You can also calculate it here for 1,000. See that 10 raised to the power of 3 will give us 1,000. This function will be useful for us later on when we're using the decibel scale because the equation to calculate or convert to the decimal scale is based off of log base 10. We can also do log base 2. 
by putting in log two. We can see that, put in a power of two, two raised to the power of six will give us 64. Another example of this. There are also a number of rounding functions that are built into our programming language to convert a decimal to a whole number or integer. So an example of this here would be round. Let's put in 6.44. It's going to round it down to six. And if we have round of 6.54, it's going to round it up to seven. There are several different kinds of functions for rounding, some that will always round down, some that will always round up. So depending on our situation, we might use one or the other. Some other functions that will come in useful for us are gonna be the trigonometric functions. So your sines and cosines and so on. One thing I'll mention now, and we'll use over and over and over again when we're synthesizing signals, is the sine function. The units that we wanna put into the sine function are actually radians. So some people have learned about using the sine function with degrees, but we're gonna use radians. So that's going to be a cycle. We'll start at zero and go all the way up to two pi. So we can look at the common uh, calculations for sine, sine of zero, turn zero. If we like to put in the sine of pi or pi divided by two, pi as a number is specified in this programming language as pi put in sine of pi, also return essentially zero. Let's put in pi divided by two. And finally, pi of sine of negative pi divided by two, which would be the same as three times pi divided by two. So one thing to notice right off the bat, when we start to use some of these functions, is that you can actually put in a mathematical uh, equation or a mathematical uh, function to be calculated in here. So this expression, three times pi divided by two, that's actually calculated first before that is used as the input to sine. Let's look at some more of examples of this. Let's go back to the square root function. So we're gonna do SQRT. Now let's put in a mathematical expression here. How about four plus five? So in this case, we can see that four plus five gets added together first, and then it's used as the input to SQRT. In commands, we can also use multiple versions of functions. So we could do SQRT of nine plus SQRT of 64. So in this case, what it is calculated is it's SQRT of nine will give us three, SQRT of 64 will give us eight. Three plus eight will result in the answer of 11. So you can see now that we have mathematical operators and built-in mathematical functions, we can do lots of different kinds of complex things. And in fact, build up very complex sorts of uh, commands to be executed. Let's continue on. In the next video, I'll talk about how we can store this information that we calculate on our computer to reuse over and over and over again.